This is a video response to the video Magneto's Evolution Revolution, posted by the us YouTube user VenomFangX. In his video, the mutant villain Magneto presents a series of serious misunderstandings and misrepresentations of his regarding the scientific theory of evolution. Based upon this flawed representation of it, he then proceeds to ask a series of rather ridiculous moral questions and encourages people to answer them from an evolutionary worldview. He treats these questions as if they were unanswerable without a religious cause behind them. This premise is flawed for a number of reasons. First off, evolution is not a worldview. It is a scientific theory. Secondly, the scientific theory of evolution has nothing to do with morals. However, for the purpose of this video, I will use the phrase evolutionary worldview as a synonym for non-religious perspective. And rather than limiting myself to answering his implicitly unanswerable questions, I will traverse his video and point out the various fallacies that Magneto commits to. The strawman fallacies begin only 30 seconds into the video. The narrator claims that evolution favours the strong over the weak. The weak must be exterminated so that the strong may survive. It doesn't. Natural selection favours the individuals that are most fit to their environment. It takes but 10 seconds for the narrator to present another man of straw, as he claims. This task of natural selection, they would argue, must be performed in a ferocious war, with the victor triumphant and the defeated extinct, all in the name of evolution. The scientific theory of evolution has absolutely nothing to do with warfare, but is a subject for social science, not biology. Furthermore, Natural selection does not imply any form of violent process. The process by which it operates is reproduction with variation. As such, the ancestral species does not go extinct either as much as it becomes the dawning species. There are no hard borders drawn between species as they diverge along the evolutionary tree. So the word species cannot always be thought of in its traditional meaning. When we are climbing the tree over time, rather than looking at it from the side, we will only see one continuous branch. But that one branch will change shape many times over the years. I will not explain this in detail, but I'll rather refer you to watch Aaron Ra's videos on the subject, as he is far more competent and has far more time to explain it than I am or do. There is, however, no doubt that the scientific theory of evolution by natural selection is being strongly misrepresented by our Magneto. I have no doubt that he is aware of this. The narrator then proceeds to ask himself, What if Magneto is right? It should be obvious by now due to his complete ignorance of even the most basic premise of the scientific theory of evolution, that he is not. After a lengthy CGI sequence, we finally meet Magneto, who at the four minute mark claims. Behold, Genosha, a city built not by human hands, but by mutant power and will. What would take your species an entire millennia? This begs the question of whether or not the mutants are already another species than humans. Can we interbreed? If not, then nothing of what Magneto is proposing would be in the name of evolution, as speciation has already occurred. If humans and mutants can interbreed, then what he is proposing is not evolution by natural selection, the scientific theory that surely is the intended target of critique by our favourite creationist, it's eugenics. In other words, evolution by artificial selections. It may be a small difference in semantics, but it has a big implication in meaning. 
That is why evolution has selected you for extinction. You are usurpers and destroyers of this planet, and you are no longer fit to survive. No, Magneto. Aside from the fact that what you're proposing is not evolution, the scientific theory of evolution does not choose species for extinction. Again, I will not go into detail about it, as Aaron Raw and so many others have already done so with inexcusable clarity. The weak must die that the strong may flourish. Okay, the weak and strong fallacy is getting overdone now, Magneto. It only goes to show your doubtlessly willful ignorance on the subject. Weak and strong are simply not interchangeable with unfit and fit. It is not due to some intelligent designer, as I'm sure the man behind you is keen to imply, that we have rabbits today, for instance. No, it is because bunnies, cute, hairy and vegetarian as they are, are in fact very fit to survive their environment, due to their splendid ability to reproduce and run from danger. And after all, we're not so different. As your government seek to assassinate me using lethal force to defend their species, I do the very same. We are both ready to kill for the preservation of our race. How dare you then accuse me of being a monster, of being a murderer, as if your human definitions are somehow binding on one who's not even a member of your own species or government. I can emphasize if biology is not your strongest subject, Magneto. But as keen as you are on using it, I would advise you to look up what the word species means. It becomes ever clearer as your video progresses that you have no understanding of it. Furthermore, I would hardly call the use of force against someone who is not only threatening to, but in the act of destroying a considerable proportion of all the animal and plant life in the world, unjustified. Indeed, have you even considered the implication of your 20 degree drop in global temperature on a grander scale? The human species that you're aiming to exterminate is arguably the most resistant species on the planet against such environmental changes. So while a goal is to eradicate the human species, it comes at the cost of eradicating a majority of other species of animals first. Indeed, I wonder what the people of your supposed utopia will eat short of each other. 30 days. Tell me why I am wrong, why I am morally wrong for doing what I am doing. Tell me, am I not right? Is it not the way of evolution to destroy the weak that the strong may survive? For the third time, Magneto, no, it is not. I addressed this fallacy twice before now. I will not do it again. Indeed, I doubt that it would matter even if I did. Is it not right to destroy the weak from polluting the genetics of the pure? No. The fact of the matter is that if that was the case in nature, it would provide evidence against evolution as we know it. Furthermore, evolution is a characteristic of life on this planet. The theory of evolution has in itself nothing to do with morals at all. It simply does not address what is right and what is wrong. You're fighting straw men, nothing more. Tell me, what right do you have to tell me that I'm wrong? You're an antisocial, narcissistic, bigoted, murderous individual who can't even seem to comprehend the most basic of biological terms, despite energetically trying to use them in your own political agenda. You show no intellectual integrity, and you display personality traits that belong only in a mental ward. Your reasoning is flawed, your assertions are incorrect, and your arguments are based entirely upon false premises. Clearly, you're an evolutionary dead end. <laughs> you know, you're a man of God. Thank you for watching.